I have a question for you. Show of hands. Who here would like to be happier? Me. <laughs> Definitely. Got you? Yeah, got so many. <coughs> I'm going to have to talk to you later. <laughs> you don't want to be happier? Maybe. OK, we're going to have to talk. So maybe it seems trivial what I'm about to tell you, but I can absolutely promise you one of the things that we've found most consistently across all of the social sciences is that everybody wants to be happier, except for Bijan. <laughs> <laughs> what it means to be happier is what we study, or part of what we study in the social sciences. And one of the social sciences, Christoph's social science, is economics, or traditional economics, which is very unfortunately well known as the dismal science, the sad science. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of reasons for this. And one of them is that it, economists tend to paint a very gloomy picture of the world. They tend to see things as happening when the worst case scenario, if you would. Now, there's a really good reason for that. And you can't blame the economist for it. <laughs> it's because it lays on the fundamental hypothesis of economics. We've talked about it today. It's rationality. It's the assumption that every decision that we take and every action that we take is based on the maximization of our own personal enjoyment or happiness. Doesn't sound so bad, right? Everybody here wants to be happier. Christoph wants to be happier. <laughs> so do I. So it can't be that bad if we're maximizing making ourselves happier, right? But if you think about it, the individual maximization of happiness can make us, let us understand much better why somebody would take their personal car instead of taking public transportation, because it makes it easier. Why would somebody not recycle? It's better for the environment. And very unfortunately, it also lets me understand why my upstairs neighbor insists on vacuuming at 11 o'clock at night every single time. <sighs> right? We know that recycling is better for the environment, but the bins are really far away. I don't want to carry trash that far. Likewise, when I'm the upstairs neighbor and I'm vacuuming and it's midnight, <laughs> and my, upstairs or my downstairs neighbor starts slamming on the ceiling. I understand, but you know, I was really busy today. And this is exactly where the problem is. When we're maximizing our own individual happiness, we're inadvertently and very much unconsciously sometimes shortchanging society's long-term goals and long-term needs. If we're shortchanging society, we're actually shortchanging ourselves because we are a part of society. Participation is a very effective way of balancing out the individual's interest of maximizing your own happiness on one hand and bringing together all of them together for a social maximizing welfare and a long-term social goal. And participation is nothing new. We do it since ever. And we do it all the time. We vote for politicians. We vote with our ballot, for example. We invest in certain projects. Or we even vote with our feet, like you did today to attend here, this TED Talks. And we do all that because we really love the right to participate in public life. And that's a good thing. But is it more that we just always maximize individuals' benefits only? So the question arises, how can we make sure that by using the individual's interest and putting them together through a mechanism to make sure that we find in the end a very good and sustainable pro-social decision? So what we've just learned is that people like to participate, and people can participate pretty much at the button with smartphones at a moment's notice. And even more than participating, people really enjoy 
the right to participate. I just want to know that I have the ability to give my opinion. And in fact, there are some very clever economists, you can speak a little bit better for them, the, from Switzerland, uh, led by Bruno Frey, if the name says anything, that have found that by increasing happiness, you get the same effect as if you would increase people's income group. As, think about that. So it's only I, the right to participate. Yeah, it's only the right to participation, of course. <coughs> but, so think about this. I'm an American, right? I have an election before me this year. This one. <laughs> I oh, may no or may not enjoy the choice that I have at the election this year. But knowing that I have the right to vote for or against the Donald not only makes me happier as a person, it makes me feel richer too. Yeah, and the way we communicate nowadays changed tremendously in the last few years. So we have heard a lot about the social networks on one hand. We are in the mentality of always on. And we have the smartphones all the time in our pockets and we make sure it's charged 24 seven, not to miss anything. Such that we can really communicate and participate at any time actually. This means, on the other side, statistically speaking, there are seven people in the room swiping through Tinder application now since we started this talk. I'm just wondering who is that? No, no? Okay. Now, coming back to our economists. Economists know that supply very often just generates its own demand. And that is the case for participation as well. Since it is so easy to participate, people demand for more participation. And by this, you might say, it's okay. But by this, we need to find out somehow a way, as I said before, which makes use out of the individual's interest to come up with a very good solution on social level. And a very big good solution is something that we need to be quite attentive to. When you want the internet to decide, when you want online mobile participation, on big topics or small topics. You need to design for it very carefully. Or you face the Bodie McBoat face incident. <laughs> so you guys are laughing. It means most of you know what happened. The British government said, name our ship. The internet said, Bodie McBoat face. <laughs> <laughs> the, the British government said, no way. This is not going to happen. The internet pouted because they didn't name it Bodie McVote face. So what happened here? The problem is, and what we need to consider, if you want to design a way to allow online participation, you have to design a mechanism that lets people be self-interested, lets them enjoy themselves, but still guarantees that what comes out at the end is a pro-social decision. Imagine I'm a city planner, and I know that the city budget surplus is big enough to fund several projects for the public. Let's say a free Wi-Fi, or let's say free bus lanes in the city center, or additional bike lanes to make cycling more comfortable. But I also know that there's not enough money to fund all of them. So it's on me to decide what of these projects or which of these projects should be funded and which should not be funded. In former times, I would that just have given to the next meeting of the budgeting committee of the city parliament, and they would decide them. But knowing that people like you maybe, or even my citizens, I know they would like to get happy with participation, I rather would go for a participating procedure and would try to shift this decision-making to my citizens. And doing so, I need to make sure that <clears throat> the allocation of, to these projects will work in a proper way, and I will bring my people to more happiness. <clears throat> so all of the questions that we've been talking about, all of the aspects that we've touched on so far today, are exactly what we do in our research lab. What we do is a research lab. We have a mini-society. We've formed a mini-society in our lab. And in, 
what we're talking about today. We asked people to fund public infrastructure from personal private budgets. We gave every participant money that was theirs, unique and individual. We told them you have a series of projects that need to be funded, and you can fund however you'd like. Each project that was available has a set cost. Each project that was available also had a set benefit to the individual as well as to the city. If a project was funded, it was taken off the list and then realized. Because by realizing a project, you're not only benefiting yourself, but you're also benefiting the city, we can call these a pro-social decision. And as a social planner, I have to very carefully think about different things to design the, proce the process of participation. And one of those is the information dynamics, meaning that we have carefully think about how to provide the information to the people who participate. So, in this case, we have to think about, for example, whether we do such process where people only do once the decision making, where they put the money, in which pot, Maggie mentioned before, they put their money, and that's it. Or do we run a process where people are exposed to the feedback of all the transactions of the others. So they see where other people invested their money, so they see the level of funding of each pot, and they can react on that and can put, can put money in or even out until a certain period of time is given. So this, the last one, is more like a market-based approach. It's more like in a stock market where you think about where should, I invest, where should I invest my money, in which stock should I invest and allocate my money for my portfolio. So what we were able to find is that people enjoyed themselves much more and overall were happier whenever they were able to get feedback on the decisions that they were making as well as see the feedback on the decisions that other people had made. So it just makes the whole process a lot more fun. But even better than that, people coordinated much better, which means that it was easier to fund projects amongst themselves because they could see what other people were doing and then adjust their decisions accordingly. And if people are having fun, if they're enjoying themselves, and they're coordinating well, what does not happen? Bodie McBoatface. You didn't have any instances of unexpected results, which is also fantastic. <laughs> so what we found is when you use feedback, it fares better in just every possible way, and it serves to hit the first of the goals that we talked about, which is making people happier altogether. And there's another issue we have to think about carefully. It is about the individual budgeting of people. And this means that we have th to think about the question, what happens if people do not really invest their money, or only a part of their money in these projects? Do they need to return the money fully to me? Or can they keep the money for their own pockets? And in our mini society, in our experimental lab, we had three scenarios. One scenario, the first one, they had to give all the money back to me, to the city planner. And the second, they had to put half of it back. And the th third, they can keep all the money for their own pocket. Uh, no, 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 no. What? If they don't get to keep the money, it's not real money. It's monopoly money. That's true, of course. That's like playing money in the end if they have to give everything back. But the other case is really very risky because it could happen that nobody is investing anything and none of our projects would be funded. But maybe not that surprisingly, people were really very excited and more excited if they could invest and they could really keep the money afterwards. So if you expose them to a world with real money, they were much happier. But on the other hand, and there always is, less projects were funded at a lower rate when you allowed people to keep the money for themselves. And that's really important because that goes against what our stated goal was, right? Actually, though, in the end, we found something really interesting. Overall welfare, overall gain in our mini society was just about equal in each of the three cases. That means if they have to give the budget back, 
if they keep part of it, or if they get to keep the whole thing, overall outcome was pretty much the same. What's the trick? The trick is because when people knew they had to make a choice between pocketing the money and investing in public infrastructure, they made much more deliberate choices. They thought about what it was that they wanted to invest in or not invest in. Four percent of the people ended up keeping the whole thing, and I know who they are. <laughs> Don't want them in my city. <laughs> But they thought about it very carefully. So what ended up happening is not only the most desirable projects were funded, but also the most desired projects were funded. You had an overall net welfare gain or an overall net selfish gain because you didn't end up using money on things that you didn't want in the first place. And this is why we say we want to use real money. Yeah, meaning. And that's a clear implication to me as a city planner. I really should go for a participatory approach if I want to make my people happier. And as we saw in the last part, we should go for a feedback-based mechanism on one hand, and we should make sure that we give them real money and they can decide, like in a real money world. And, and make them happy. Oh, make them happy. <laughs> This happy. one is happy now. <laughs> <laughs> What we were also able to find, speaking of happy, is that people really enjoyed their role and choosing their role between keeping all of the money themselves or part of the money themselves and investing in public infrastructure. And that right to participate is, in the end, what guarantees the pro-social decision that still leaves people happy. We, in our work, have been trying to find a very fine line And that's between individual needs and institutional demands. And when you use participation to this extent, what we find is that there are just so many unused opportunities out there, where places that people can participate fully in making decisions without losing any quality. And the added bonus that we've sort of talked about a little bit, everything we've talked about on this stage so far, can be fully implemented online, in online social media, in online social apps. To, ap to wrap up, as long as you are really interested to make your people happy in your community and want to make sure that you get really high quality and really pro-social solutions and decision processes in your community, you definitely should increase participation, but design it right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.